Good evening and welcome to the May 23rd meeting of the Bella Vista the City Council. Will you please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll do the roll call of council. Council Member Wozniak? Here. Flynn? Here. Snow? Here. Burke? Present. Wilms? Here. Fowler? Here. All present. Thank you. We move on to citizen input. The first is Nina Berger, please. I'm here because of my concern over our Street 8, Sidlaw Hills Drive, um, and how fast the workers are driving up and down our street. Um, luckily, we're too old to have children. <laughs> but we do have pets. What street is that? 8, Sidlaw Hills Drive in Bella Vista. So, Chief, Sidlaw Hills, speeding on Sidlaw Hills is the query? Okay, good. Oh, I've called the police, but I didn't get a response. Okay, Chief is sitting right back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that I'll was share my your main concern. And no, that's well taken. I'm glad you brought it up. Mm -hmm. And if I may, I'll share your um, address and your telephone number with Chief as well. Okay. Great stuff. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, Lynn. Hi, my name is Lynn Goldbeck. I live at 13 Sidlaw Hills Drive, across the street from Nina Berger. I lived there two years with Don Robinson, who was on this planning commissioner for 14 years. There's his plaque. He would be here tonight, but he's had medical issues. He would love to express his how we're dealing with this. <laughs> so I'm here on behalf of both of us. Started with fires, started with clearing. We know that there's been a lot of ordinances, changes, but we've had unattended fires, not controlled. Stolen water out of hydrants from a private fire engine from Dwayne Swanson, builder from Gentry. That's been verified. There have been calls on this and they haven't come. Well, they've had fires right next to homes at 40 feet with embers going next to homes. We've got five brand new homes being built just on Sidlaw Hills and Sidlaw Hills Lane. And so that all started there, the clearing and the fires. They didn't come on the 31st or the 30th of November, even though there was a call and they didn't show up. And we have somebody here will talk about that. And they left the fire engine, the private fire engine outside of the lot by the 17 home on Sidlaw Hills Lane, or Drive. And they left the fire engine sitting there unattended. And that was back in November? November 30th, okay. just last year. Okay. So then we continued to call next three nights in a row and the fire department did come, but they'd always say it was controlled burns. And it was really pulling teeth to get people to come and put the fires out. And they even tried to call the builder and he didn't answer. In fact, I, want, I don't know if you received the petition that I took to Wayne Jurtson that was signed by all our neighbors I don't about this very it, no. thing. You never saw it? You were on vacation. I brought it down okay. to the city hall. Yeah, that was quite a while back. And you did give it to the yep. mayor? Well, Lois Adams, who lives on 22 Sidlaw Hills Drive, there's two houses being built on two lots there. Dwayne Swanson, right here, wanted to give his phone number, and he asked me to watch fire and call if needed attention. Filled tank with fire truck from the hydrant at 18 Sidlaw Hills Drive. Drove track hole down the street. We've even had water meters pulled up out of, and the whole pipe broke. And it was like that for a long time until the POA come and fixed it. And it's not fixed yet because they just put the cap back on. So there was a hole where the water cap was off. Blocked mailboxes for two days. That's her writing right here. She can't make it tonight either. So I'm reading this what she wrote on, this, on, this, on the petition. We've tried everything we can. They had to put the fires out each time. There was three fires. 
waste a lot of water, a lot of time, a lot of city, city materials. And when was that, Lynn? That was on the 1st and 2nd and 3rd of December, you know, three nights in so a row. So we're back to December? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we thought, okay, so... Your time is up, Lynn, I'm sorry. Can I get an extension on the litter? No. Okay, Three well, minutes. somebody else will talk about that. I've got okay. pictures I've sent to Jerry Snow, by the way. Okay. He has them. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Chris Nelson. Chris Nelson, 1 Harrington Drive. Uh, I've sent multiple emails. Apparently, they're going to junk. Um, going to echo the same sentiment. We've called about illegal dumping on our street in January. Uh, wife called back in March. Three other residents called. One resident actually met with you in your office. Seems to be a lack of follow through issue going on. Just need people to start taking their jobs seriously and start having some accountability. Name of the resident, please. Mary Green. Oh, yes, okay. Yep. She actually called me. She called That's you fine. and yep. she met with you, and there was still no follow through. I believe it was May 9th, uh, reported illegal dumping again, uh, vegetative material, sent an email again, uh, called the non emergency police line, no response. No follow through, sent an email to you and the chief of police. No follow up after it was found in junk. The only person that followed up was uh, Doug Tapp. Doug so Tapp. I appreciate that. That's right. so, that's, I'm here to support Jerry Snow and you wanted to see people out here. So that's why I'm here. I believe I followed up when you, you called me, up. did I immediately, right? Did. Okay. When he got taken care when, of, right? When he came back into town, the lack of follow up stopped. That's because everything went to junk mail. Remember we talked about yeah. that? Yeah. So I might want to follow up on your email system and make sure that right. residents' emails are coming through. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Is it Mark Warsaw? My name is Mark Warsaw, 5 Buckingham Drive. I just had a few questions. Uh, first one, the lot clearing burn permit application I'm looking at here. I tried to reach out to Jason Bowman uh, today, several occasions. Excuse me. The number on here doesn't go to him. It goes to the city. I was rerouted uh, to several fire stations. I still don't know where he's at um, to get. I have a lot of questions here on this permit application. How does this process work? You fill out the information. It says the emails to Jason Bowman. He clears the permit. Is that my? Is that how this yes, works? Yes, he's the fire marshal. Okay, so he gives the permit, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm a builder. I go over, I put it on the tree, I go to put it on the tree, right? I have someone clear it. Who's following up to make sure that the people who are getting these permits don't have criminals, uh, backgrounds, or any other information like that? I mean, who, if you're building 4,000 houses, pretty good chance that you're going to have 4,000 clearing permits, wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm, sure. So who oversees that at that point? Mr. Tab. Okay. So he's responsible for these, because on, on several occasions, um, I've been out to these lots, there's no, there's no uh, signage saying that lots are being cleared. In a lot of cases, they're burning and nobody's around. Doug, don't they have to post the permit? It's the erosion permit <coughs> and grading, E and G. So okay. there should be some information that's provided when I enter the lot if it's burned, right? Because I haven't seen it. And, and it says here on, on the sheet, it says contractor. A lot of these guys have people clearing a lot that aren't contractors. Are they supposed to be on this too? You're, you need to address the cost. Are the, are the people on here supposed to be, the contractor here it says for permit application. If he's not a contractor, can he still get a burn permit? I guess is my question. Well, if he's working for a contractor, is that what you're saying? Yeah. In a lot of cases, they, they get someone to clear it, right? That's correct. Whose responsibility is this? Rolls it, back up it, to it rolls back to the contractor, not not the sub. Okay. All right. So after it gets approved, it should be in that lot. Then it's overseen by Doug Tapp, right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. My other question was on uh, the city site on sewer uh, hookups. Um, I've asked repeatedly to get updates on that. The city doesn't have any sewer. There's a there's a sewer list. I understand it works on the water department, but there's a list that uh, goes back to May that shows which streets are on sewer. That's maintained by Village Wastewater. Okay. 
so you don't have any responsibility. So when you go to dig up the roads or any any of that stuff, does it goes under village wastewater? Correct. Frank Knight is the contact. Okay. Because yeah. I talked to you, Doug, about that. Doug, you remember you had to come I talked to Doug Tapp about that, mm -hmm. and he would said he said he'd check into it. He didn't tell me I need to redirect it to somebody else. Yeah, Frank Knight is your fellow. Okay. K N I G H T. So who oversees doing that? I'd have to talk to. Yep, the time's up. Okay. But we can chat afterwards, or you can chat with Doug. Afterwards. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Gray. Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Gray. I'm at uh, 12 Presley Lane, mm -hmm. and I am um, currently building a house that is close to being done. And I had my driveway poured, and so I contacted the streets department to find about find out about getting the rest of my cul-de-sac paved because my lane is paved right up to my property line and just the cul-de-sac section is not. And the nice gentleman at the streets department said that um, it was his understanding they were no longer paving any unpaved streets, they were only maintaining those that were paved and that I needed to talk to the city council about getting that component of my street paved um, because I'm building and then there's several other homes that are going to be started on that. So. That is my question is how do I proceed with getting um, the street paved in front of my house like my neighbors have. Okay, at the response portion, uh, Council Member Flynn is actually head up of the, of the streets department. Okay. I'm, I'm sure he'll be glad to tell you. All right, thank you so much for. You're welcome. Randy Murray. I'm Randy Murray. My address is 2551 Forest Hills Boulevard. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the uh, variance code changes that were proposed and talked about in the last meeting. I think it's fantastic. That process, it just, it takes a long time. Uh, most people uh, don't own their buildings and they lease their buildings and the leasing process takes a long time. It's expensive and to tie up all that money to try to get the variance, to tie up all that money waiting on the permit process and then once you're permitted and everything's approved, then you get to go hunt down in this market uh, a team of contractors to get started. And, and the 120 day window is just an impossible task. And, and so it just makes people have to come back and get another variance. And it just, it takes too long. I think we're gonna end up bankrupt in small businesses trying to wait for it. And so there's a bunch of proposed changes on there and I think they're fantastic. And, and I think that's the kind of stuff that we need to be seeing more of in with the planning commission and city council and, and I'm, I'm 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 thrilled to see it on there and so anyway i wanted to tell you guys what i thought about that and i've been on the other side of that coin you know waiting on that stuff and it's just it's a super expensive process to just sit and wait and sit and wait and sit and wait before you even have the opportunity to go hire people to do the work and and so the 120 day window is not a even a possibility i don't think in this market and so Anyway, um, just for your consideration when it's time to talk about that, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Mark Bean. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mark Beam. I live at uh, 4 Sidlaw Hills Lane uh, in Bella Vista. Neighbors with uh, Nina Berger and Lynn Goldbeck. I want to appreciate everybody for listening to our concerns tonight. Um, I know it's, it's uh, kind of can be troublesome, but I can attest to all the points that they have made. Uh, namely, the speeding has been a pretty big issue. My 81-year-old uh, mother lives four doors up from me mm. on Sidlaw Hills Drive, and I can attest that there's a whole lot of cars that drive way past the 25 mile an hour speed limit on that street. So other than that, um, the fires that we've had that were unattended, uh, there were many, as Lynn attested to. Um, the one that stands out the most was on that November 30th. Uh, I was driving up to take care of my mom. She needed some attention. And the, here I see this bonfire with these sparks that are shooting 40, good 40 feet in the air. And there's a breeze blowing, uh, which is blowing a lot of the sparks right across the roadways. So there I stopped. And I'll tell you, a good way to meet a new neighbor is to stop at a fire and then back into their brick mailbox. I can attest to that. Um, <laughs> But I just want to make sure that uh, we're aware. I did call the fire department that night. Uh, the young man that I did talk to said that he would get somebody out there. We didn't see anybody. There wasn't any, there was no follow through on that whatsoever. So just want to make you aware of that. Okay, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Thank you. That ends the um, 
citizen input. We'll move now to council reply. John, do you want to kick it off with the uh, paving policy? Sure. Yeah, I, I uh, believe Elizabeth Gray was the lady's name. Yeah, I'd like mm -hmm. to discuss with you uh, afterwards, g you know, get the details on it. And uh, But the paving policy was made more strict in the last year or so at council's behest, actually, that uh, they didn't necessarily want to pave every time there was some new construction, but that doesn't mean it couldn't possibly occur. I would like to talk to you about it. And uh, my contact info is on the website, uh, and I, I wouldn't mind getting your contact info if you could, if you could leave it for me. Um, uh, let's see, on the other issues that came up, uh, on Sidlaw Hills, I was wondering if the fires are all past tense or if it's, that still could be an issue. And uh, uh, on Randy Murray's comment, I was wondering what he thought about 365 days. Okay. Um, Instead of 120. We're not going to get into a debate. So, uh, Randy, is a thumb up or thumb down on, th on, on 365? Okay, Lynn, are the fires still going? I'm sorry? Okay. Okay, but are, are the fires still occurring? Okay. 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 Thanks, Lynn. All right. Anybody else wish to comment? Doug? Yeah, I will. Um, just everybody needs to remember as well that their home hasn't existed where it does from the beginning, forever. At some point, at some time, that lot was cleared and that home was built and it was probably just as messy and it could have been more messy than the house that might be built, be being built next door or across the street. It, it's just messy, period. Um, it's, it's inconvenient. I get it. Again, I wish it were perfect. It isn't. I will tell you, every time someone has called me uh, to, to, to ask for assistance or any help I might be able to give them in getting a certain situation taken place, taken care of, I have done that. Every single time, CDS and fire has followed up, like immediately, and taking care of the issue, taking care of the problem, contacted the, contacted the contractor or whatever. And you gotta remember too, as hard as it is, there are contractors, but there are so many subcontractors coming and going all the time, it's just hard to manage the whole thing. So uh, just, you know, all I ask you to keep that in mind too. If you have any issues, call one of the city council members because they might have a little bit more direct line or contact with an individual that they might need to, to talk to in order to try to get something taken care of. Um, and Chris, you alluded, right, that you didn't get any response, but you didn't talk about when you called me, I came straight out with Doug Tapp, we looked it all over, we tried to follow up, we tried to figure out was, what was going on uh, with the illegal dumping. What I found fa fascinating is uh, that had to be kind of a big deal when whoever brought that deck in there and dumped it and what's fascinating is we, no one ever said they saw anything or they heard anything so they could give us a heads up for who it might be. We still don't know who dumped the deck. It could have been whoever owned those two lots. But I got an email from Doug today or yesterday uh, saying that the guy that owns those two lots, he had grading permits, he could clear the lot, he has building permits and everything else. So he is allowed some leeway on those lots. I'm not saying he can dump on it necessarily, certain materials. But um, all I want to let you know is that as soon as I was made aware of it, we followed up and we tried to get the situation take care of, taken care of, and you know it. <coughs> well, that might be, but I wasn't involved any time before that, any time before then. So I do know that you did uh, get get a response, uh, and, and the situation did get did get taken care of. Now this isn't a go back and forth. This is my time to find it to you. 
Okay, Lynn. Oh. Yep. Uh, uh, Jerry can show us later. Yep. Um, Doug, anything else? No, that's it. Steve? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to all of the public input speakers tonight. You know, I think if there is a thread that ran through a number of those feedbacks, it was responsiveness. And I think I think when a the, I think the city is really in the business of providing service to our citizens and to our residents. Mm -hmm. And so I think that feedback is useful. And I, I think uh, it helps us understand where we're at and whether we're meeting the needs. And I'm sure no service business bats a thousand, uh, but we should aspire to be complete and thorough in the feedback and in, in the response that we give to citizens when they're inquiring. So that's real. And I think our department heads get to hear it here in a public forum. Uh, I think that's useful. And not to be defensive about it, but to always be looking at uh, this is our business. This is what we do. How can we do it a little bit better? How can we do it better next time? And I could give instances of where I've called the fire department and they've responded immediately to an un unattended fire on our street. That's not really the point. The point isn't where we did right. The point is how consistently are we meeting the expectations of our residents? And that's a high bar, but it is one we ought to aspire to. Okay, on the other side, anyone? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. No. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Just a couple of comments. I guess my, my experience in working with the DCD and the fire department, police department, they've all been, all been responsive and not necessarily directly to me, but in terms of issues that have come up, uh, we did adopt uh, revisions last year that created a permitting process for lot burns because of the problems that were, we were encountering and experiencing. That became a, 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 a big issue. Uh, the result of that was that the fire department streamlined it so you can do an online application. It's reviewed and processed online. And then there's a, some requirements of the applicant to notify the fire department when they're going to do the burn. And if it's not a good time, they're told at that point that they can't burn on that day or that week. Whatever the case may be, it might be a, 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 a drought, a dry period, so they can't burn for the week. Uh, might be a wind condition, so they need to call and notify the fire department. They can call actually five minutes before they they start the fire, but they do need to call and notify them. So they can be, they can be fined for that. Uh, if, if anyone sees them doing something that doesn't make sense, we call the non-emergency number at the fire department, ask about the permit. Uh, if it looks like it's too windy and they're still burning out there, there's things blowing, ashes blowing over. Uh, so. There are reasons for, for doing that. Uh, some of the builders uh, are jobbers, which means that they do nothing themselves. They have no workforce. They subcontract every activity that goes on in building a house. And we have a number of those. Uh, it's, a, it's a business. And so the builder uh, will sign the documents, but he may not have or lift a finger on doing any of the work. It's all subbed out. So. Those are all challenges that we face in terms of administration. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Anything? Yeah, just briefly, I, you know, we're in the business of public service. These people are our customers. So, uh, and uh, if it was a, um, a retail establishment or something, and and uh, they uh, called on them and did not get the service that they were supposed to get, they go someplace else. But in our situation, they don't have that opportunity. Uh, it, it's. We, we are supposed to deal with those matters, and uh, but it seems like maybe that we've gotten into a situation of, of um, sounds to me like some excuses. We've got a lot of excuses as to why we're not doing certain things. We got too much to do, we got an overload, we got more work to, to take care of than we got the people to take care of it. Um, I, I, I don't know what the answer is to, to uh, to uh, to improve on that service, I mean, I know what the answer is, but I don't know that uh, I don't think I have the the uh, the ability to to make that to happen. So, again, uh, thanks to everyone for 
your comments and for what you've had to say tonight and and hope that uh, if you have a problem you got an issue that you will continue to reach out to the proper department if you don't get an answer there well then you call one of us um, I know I try myself to be uh, responsive to the uh, people that call and uh, I because I believe in I believe in customer service. I believe in, in being of service to the people that that pay our uh, that that uh, support us. So that's it. Okay, Chief. Well, you know these people aren't looking for excuses. They're looking for results. If it's the fact that we don't have enough people to take care of what they want, well, then we need to go and put some more people on. <clears throat> if they are in fact reporting as they say they are, and I have no reason to believe that they're not. You know, if they're talking to a dispatcher or a fireman, you know, if they can give us date and time and stuff, almost everything gets recorded. Find out who's not passing the information on and find out what's going there. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I follow up? Sure. Yeah, so um, I agree with Steve's comments. You know, uh, we're in business of customer service, right? Uh, we want to satisfy the residents of the city uh we would aspire to bat a thousand percent fact is that's that's a pretty that's a pretty pretty tall task right um and i will tell you that when cds when something slips by and they're not aware of it and they got to go out and take care of it they're disappointed you know i interact with them all the time and i'm and the thing about me is uh I'm not making excuses for them, but I'm not going to throw them under the bus either because I know how hard they work and I know how, how hard they strive to service the residents of this community. I wish it was a perfect world, but it isn't. And I hear your concerns. I mean, I today got in my truck. I drove around for two hours just finding new bills, just looking at them, just seeing what's going on. And, you know, most of them were pretty good. I don't know what perfect is, but they were pretty good. A couple of them, I took photos of them. I'm going to contact uh, Doug's uh, staff tomorrow, see if we can't have some follow-up, uh, and see if we can't get something about done about it. So I do appreciate your comments, uh, but everybody works really hard to, to service the residents of Bella Vista. Trust me, I know it for a fact. Okay, thank you. Thank you one and all for your comments tonight. That was uh, good. And Mayor, just one thing. Yep. Randy, you gave us a four-digit address for where you live on Forest Hills. There aren't many houses on Forest Hills, just exactly more or less where is that? Uh, yeah, so where the new police station is, yeah. um, just south of that. Oh, that house, the last, buildings, yeah. you're, you're the last house in the city, aren't you, Randy? I'm pretty much the end of the line. Yeah, end of the okay. line. <laughs> all right, so, thank you. All righty, thank you one and all. I'm sorry, ma'am, the, the sign up was earlier to be able to talk. The counselors, uh, the counselors are, I'm sorry? Yeah, the list was over by the front where everybody was signing up. Now, if if you want, you can speak to us afterwards. Sure, because I don't think we're going to be that long. Talk. I'm sorry? I'd like to make a motion we let him talk. He gets it gets three minutes. I, w I would second that. Okay. Any discussion? It's fine with me. Okay. Wayne? Okay, you want to do a roll call on that? Yep. Councilmember Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Snow? Yes. Carry. Okay, sir, you were first. Uh, do you want to come up and Thank you. Sure. Could you give us your name, address, and yes, phone number? Yes, my name is Greg Hayseen, and I'm a resident at 34 Constant Circle here in Bella Vista. I'm speaking to you all today because I'd like to try to add an ordinance or see what I have to do to add an ordinance that prohibits the chaining, tethering, or trawling of dogs in unfenced areas. I'd like to adopt an ordinance similar to the language of Mommel, Arkansas, which states, animals may not be tethered. Any person owning animals, whether vaccinated or unvaccinated, licensed or unlicensed, shall confine such animal within an adequate fence or enclosure or within a house, garage, or other building. Animals shall not be tied or chained to dog houses or other stationary objects, but must be in an improved enclosure. Uh, I want to do this for a few different reasons. The first reason is that is it's unsightly and does not fit the aesthetic appearance that I think Bella Vista tries to promote. 
Uh, for the same reason that people aren't allowed to store their RVs, their boats in the driveways, or have cars sitting on cinder blocks, I think that residents should not be allowed to have dogs untethered in unfenced areas because it's unsightly. And a big part of the reason it's unsightly is because of the inhumane nature of the activity. Uh, but the second more important reason is that it poses a safety hazard to the residents of Bella Vista, particularly young children. 25% of all fatal dog attacks from 1965 to 2001 were inflicted by chains dogs, and 30% of children aged 1 to 9 killed by dogs in the U.S. between 1989 and 1994 died after wandering too close to a chained animal, uh, chained dog. Furthermore, a study by the CDC found that chained dogs are 2.8 times more likely to bite and tend to exhibit more aggressive behavior than dogs that are not tethered. Aggressive dogs are more likely to bark as well, which also creates a nuisance for the surrounding houses. Bella Vista is a community that encourages outdoor recreation, and people should not have to worry about a tethered dog attacking them or their children while they walk, play, or ride their bike outside. In my personal situation, our neighbor is a woman in her late 80s that has a 90-pound boxer that is aggressive, energetic, energetic, and unsupervised in her front yard for hours a day. She is not physically capable of handling a dog that size, and I am worried that one day the dog will break free of his tether. Every time it is outside and I leave my house, it runs to the end of its tether and aggressively barks at me and my wife and everybody else who passes by. This has been going on for months, and I do not think that any resident of Bella Vista should have to deal with this every time they bring in groceries, do yard work, get their mail, or walk by their neighbor's house. Additionally, I will be having small children playing out there in the future, and I do not want to worry about them being attacked by a large, aggressive, unsupervised tethered dog. Adding an ordinance like the one that I suggested would be beneficial for all residents, both human and canine, of Bella Vista, and I'd like to see our great city be like the many others that have adopted ordinances of this nature. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Hastings. Uh, Ma'am? Okay, you got something other than different than what we've heard tonight? I I just was wondering if y'all had talked about the Airbnbs. Not yet. We're no, working on no, that hasn't come that. in front of council yet. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that okay, we were told that it, it was tonight. No, no, the earliest will be next month. Okay. Our agendas was, are online. Okay. That was all I needed to know. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all righty. Anybody want to talk anymore? No. I guess, I guess the, my understanding was that you're not allowed to tether a dog from a single point, that you're required to have a stringer between two posts, two trees, with a sliding loop that can run on that tether line to allow the dog movement so that it can't get wrapped up or tied up or choked up, so that it has free roam to go. Um, so I looked into what the ordinance office are, and there's actually That's nothing about it. There's void ordinances that are on paper here, but there's nothing really about the nature of that. But the tether, I don't think, really has yeah. order. Okay, uh, the person you want to talk to, if you turn over on your left shoulder, that's our animal control officer right there, uh, Leslie Ann Pratt. And I know that um, she's well aware of this, and we sh shared your email, which is basically what you read tonight, uh, with her. So if you want to have a chat with her, by all means do so. If you don't want to hear the rest of the stuff, you can go out into the corridor and have a chat, and I know she'd be more than happy uh, to do so. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the approval of the minutes of the April 25th regular meeting. Are there, are there any errors or omissions? Move that be approved. Ms. Second. Okay, that's moved by Mr. Snow and seconded by Duh. Mr. Fowler. Fowler. Yeah. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Councilmember Snow? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Burke? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. Financial reports. Kim has sent out February, March, April. We're now finally caught up. Um, I won't do the February and March, but in the April one, um, I'm pleased to report that the city sales tax is 27% increase over the budget and the county is actually 5% over the budget and if you remember we had some concerns about the county and so these good numbers actually mean that we're $406,688 over the budget uh, as far as a revenue surplus and that will come into our discussion later for Chief Graves uh, request which if you remember we denied at the budget time for more people because we wanted to see what the impact was going to be on the sales tax. So we're in excellent financial shape. There is a copy, I guess they're all gone, um, but you can get them from City Hall and they've also been posted on the web page if you'd like to see our latest financial statements. 
I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules and read all ordinances and resolutions on the agenda by title only. So moved. Second. Mr. Wilms and Mr. Flynn. Flynn. All right. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Councilmember Flynn? Yes. Snow? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Burke? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Terry? 6 0. Thank you. And a new business, we have an ordinance amending section 109 42 variances to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Bella Vista to remove time limits of zoning variances to reduce the required review criteria for zoning variances to remove parking reduction uh, considerations from administrative review and for other purposes staff is requesting third and final reading mr. Wilms I understand that you have an amendment I do um, I'd like to make a few comments about the proposed uh, request for variance the proposal is to reduce the criteria uh, for considering a variance uh, by the uh, Board of Zoning Adjustment. Uh, a variance is really a request to, to get a permanent approval to break the law in the city of Bella Vista. It's the same in other cities where variances are dealt with. But literally they're asking to break the law for a particular reason. Those reasons uh, are held high in terms of standards. Uh, the reasons that we have now started out as a basic group of, of five and that basic group of five deals with five concepts and one is preservation of intent another one is exceptional circumstance another one is hardships which are not grounds for a variance in other words a self-imposed hardship is not a reason for a variance and unimposed hardship can be a reason preservation of property rights of that zoning district and then absence of detriment, meaning absence of d detriment to adjacent or surrounding properties. So those are the traditional five. Those were uh, modulated into eight, eight factors. Uh, they become cumbersome. So the uh, planning uh, staff proposed an amendment to follow the state criteria uh, for variances and their, their criteria are broad but cover those areas but in three steps rather than in five steps or eight steps so they believe that administratively it will be more cost-effective for them to do it that way and I, I think uh, we need to try that and see how it works my request tonight for the proposed uh, amendment or pro proposed ordinance uh, adopting those changes uh, is twofold uh, one is that I agree with eliminating the uh, no parking standards uh, so we have no parking standards for commercial uh, it's up to each business to make sure they have enough parking on their facility to accommodate their needs and business order uh, secondly is that a proposal in this request is to eliminate any uh, time uh, uh, or a sunset provision on the variance granted uh, I think like a building permit it has a time of performance on it uh, commensurate with the time to reasonably start a project a variance should have that same standard uh, there are unscrupulous folks out there and I've been in this business for close to 50 years now uh, dealing with the public with variances with zoning issues and codes and there are people out there who will take advantage of getting a variance approval and then using it to improve their position on their property that they want to sell or market or or construct um, and it's not for their not for the benefit necessarily of the uh, situation but it's for personal gain and so I would propose that we put, have an amendment that would replace the time limit there I think it's 120 days to extend that time limit as a sunset of 365 days uh, attorney Kelly passed out a, a draft of that uh, language for you tonight so I would submit that as a proposed am a mo motion to amend to bring time a time of performance back into it I would second that Okay, we have a motion to amend from Mr. Wilms, a second from Mr. Burke. 
that's what's on the disc. And that's the one that um, Mr. Kelly held up earlier? Yes. Okay. Um, I think there were some copies back there as well. And they're on the table? Okay. Discussion, gentlemen. I would just say, Mayor, that I, I think it's practical to have some kind of end date on it, and I think a year is adequate uh, to give people the opportunity to start uh, the establishment of their variance. Mm -hmm. They don't have to finish it by then. They have to start it by then. It seems, seems practical and, and fair to me. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I kind of agreed with Mr. Wilms' concept that having it totally open-ended maybe wasn't a good idea, and there should be some kind of limit. So I, I see where he's going with that. Okay. Doug, anything? Uh, a year sufficient. Okay. Anybody on this side? Okay. We have an amendment on the floor. It's been moved and seconded, and we'll go for roll call. Okay. Roll call vote on the amendment. <coughs> Councilmember Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Terry, 6 0. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Did you want to say something, Mr. Kelly? I'm sorry. I was just going to. Okay. <laughs> I was anticipating. You go right ahead. <laughs> to Don't suspend move. the rules <laughs> and move to third and final for the amended ordinance. Second. So Second. Okay, I think that was Mr. Flynn and, uh, and Mr. Wilms. Wozniak and Wilms. Oh, yeah. Wozniak and Wilms. Sorry, John. I'm it's all right. <laughs> okay, is there any further discussion before? It? No, I'm sorry. I'm going to read it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to read it now. Okay. We'll yeah. do the roll call. The vote first. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Councilmember Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Snow. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, amending section 109 42 variances to the Code of Ordinances of the City of Bella Vista to remove time limits of zoning variances to reduce the required review criteria for zoning variances to remove parking re reduction considerations from administrative review and for other purposes as amended. Third and final reading. Mr. Point Williams. of order, if I may. Uh, do we need to change the title? No. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Wozniak and Mr. Wilms? All right. <coughs> Roll call vote again. <coughs> Councilmember Wozniak? Yes. Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Snow? Yes. Wozniak? Whoops, again, sorry. yes. Flynn? <laughs> yes. <coughs> Wilms. Yes. Carry it 6 0. Thank you. The next ordinance is amending section 107 317 access management of the code of ordinances of the city of Bella Vista to provide clarification regarding access drive distance from intersections and for other purposes. In your packet this time, there are some uh, diagrams that I think Derek, you um, uh, put together. And it provides a little more clarification on what we were talking about at the work session. Uh, count, I see no uh, prompt here to go to third and final. So um, is there any discussion at this time or just move on and we'll do a second reading next month? I think the consensus uh, in talking with uh, uh, Derek is to uh, do the first reading and we'll consider any additions for next month. All right, fair enough. That's okay, Derek? Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, well then we'll move on to the first resolution of the evening. And that's renaming Mole Lane to Mac Lane. If you remember, we had a petition um, for this change to honor a gentleman who is now deceased who had lived on that lane. There were very, very few houses. Uh, and we had asked the petitioners if they had a written approval from the other residents to actually do this because they'll have to change their address for all their credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they did not. So we asked them to actually give us something in writing that says that they have no objection. As of um, today, Taylor, we haven't heard anything. So I'm going to entertain a motion to table until June because I believe they're out of state, are they not? In California? 
Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we table till uh, remember we in June meeting. On June? Second. Second, Mr. Flynn. Any discussion? Wayne? Okay. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Councilmember Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Snow? Yes. Burke? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. The next resolution expressing the willingness of the City of Bella Vista to utilize federal aid surf surface transportation block grant program attributable funds to assist with the construction of the Mercy Way corridor improvements. This and the next one are both Mercy Way Bridge. And so what has happened is we have ended up incurring additional cost from Carroll Electric to move some of the lines. Um, one of the property owners decided at the last minute that he was not going to give Carroll Electric an easement and therefore the actual positioning of the lines had to change which is going to cost the city $196,000. So we are asking council's permission to pursue grants to be able to make up 80% of that. And there's two separate grants. This is the first one, it's an SDB uh, grant program and it's an 80-20. So that's what we're trying to do here because we want to keep the city exposure on that um, $7 million project very, very low. We've got it down to about 300 and something thousand now, Doug. Okay, fair enough. Are there any questions for Doug and his crew on this? Okay, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So Double. moved. Second. <laughs> I think we got Mr. Flynn and Chief Wozniak. Yes. All right, <clears throat> roll call vote. House Member Snow. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke? Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. The next resolution is expressing the willingness of the City of Bella Vista to utilize federal aid transportation alternatives program funds to assist with the construction of the Mercy Way corridor improvement. So, this is the other grant that we will go after to try and help us uh, reduce this extra cost. The plan is to take the, the 196 and divide it in half and apply to regional planning for uh, these two grants. Are there any questions at all? I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, Emily for her initial effort to uh, bring this to our attention and, and do the legwork to get this ready to go. Agreed. So Agreed. It's a, a tribute to, I think, the CDS department for that. It's good, thank you. And okay, so I'm looking for a motion. So make, a motion to make a motion to approve. Mr. Fowler, second. No, second. Mr. Then. Wilms. Mm -hmm. All right. Roll call vote again. Councilmember Burke. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Snow. Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. The next resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a three year lease contract with Stronghold Data LLC in an amount not to exceed $39,845.70 for the lease of Dell computers and associated equipment. For those of you that are not familiar with this, the city does not buy computers because they go out of date very quickly and you don't have the support anymore within the twinkling of an eye, which is usually five years. So we lease them and then we give them back and we lease new ones back into the fold again. So we have a number of them. Um, we actually had two programs that have come together and that's why it's a little higher than we normally do. And so this amount of $39,000 and change is actually spread over three years so that it's $13,282 a year and the money is in the, um, uh, the 2022 budget for this year. Any questions? Move. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Chief. Seconded by Mr. Flynn. All right. 
Councilmember Snow. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke. Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, thank you. The next resolution is amending the 2022 city budget to appropriate $309,688 in otherwise unappropriated and unrestricted financial reserves to the police department to fund three additional police officers, full-time police officers, including equipment and vehicles and one full-time police uh, records clerk. Back to the previous budget discussion. Um, year to date, we are in a very nice situation on our tax income of being 406,688 over the budget. Plus um, we also have cash on hand of almost 17 million. So by our own ordinance, we have to keep 25% of that 17 million on hand for a rainy day. We're actually, when you take the unassigned and look at it and do the math, we're actually at 71%. So we're well ahead of the game. So um, Chief had asked for these heads, as I mentioned earlier, back during the budget cycle last year. And we asked him to hold off until we had had a chance to review the tax revenue in the first quarter and lo and behold uh, we are in good shape are there any questions for chief move to be approved mr snow to approve second right. mr flynn second all right <coughs> councilmember wozniak yes wilms yes snow yes flynn yes burke yes Fowler. Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. The next resolution amending the 2022 city budget to appropriate $1,000 in otherwise unappropriated and unrestricted financial reserves to Department Number 10 Administration to fund minor expenses related to the functions of the Bella Vista Arts Council. Mr. Burke. Yes, sir. Mayor Christie, this was uh, proposed uh, as a response to recognition of the Arts Council. Uh, for the good work that they've done for the Artist of the Month program especially. Uh, we understand that the Arts Council has to occasionally take money out of their own pocket for kind of incidental expenses. And this is just a way for the city to, to take that responsibility for those expenses so that we don't have volunteers having to take money out of their own pocket to, to volunteer on behalf of the city. So. It's nominal amount, and for the year we're going to allocate $1,000. This will be spent at the mayor's discretion by request of, uh, of members of the Art Council. So. Okay. Are there any questions at all? Motion to approve. Second. All right. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Councilmember Wilms? Yes. Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. The next resolution is amending the 2022 city budget to appropriate $15,000 in otherwise unappropriated and unrestricted financial reserves to the Community Development Services Department to fund stipends for members of the Bella Vista Planning Commission authorizing stipends in the amount of $150 dollars per planning commission meeting for planning commissioners who are not the chair and 180 per planning commission meeting for the planning commission chair if you remember uh, this request had come in through cds and the planning commission especially since we have now uh, melded the board of zoning adjustment responsibilities into the planning commission i did look at the city of or the, or the cities of farmington lowell and p ridge Farmington is paying uh, $200 a meeting, Lowell 100, and Pea Ridge uh, 175. So at the at the work session, we felt that uh, 150 was a happy medium for the commissioners, and then it was suggested that we also give an additional $30 to the chair. Um, is there any discussion at all, Mr. Wells? Just one comment. Comment that uh, the city of Centerton also uh, pays their board of zoning adjustment and their Planning Commission members for each meeting uh, the chair is separate uh, so if the 
designated chair is not there to uh, chair the meeting, the one acting in the chair position gets the extra payment uh, because that's what their duty is for that night. So I don't know if that our, our code allows for that, but I would think that there are occasions when our designated chairperson is not there. We do have a designated uh, alternate, I think, for the Planning Commission, do we not? There's only one chair at the Planning Commission at the time, so this doesn't well, mean I, that it's okay. okay. It's not the person chairing the meeting, it's the chair. So even if the chair, of course, if the chair missed the meeting, the chair wouldn't be paid anything. Right. But uh, okay. it so only goes to the chairperson. Okay, it's designated by, ti by, by title, not by meeting. activity at the meeting. So, okay, all right. I, I'm That's how it's written. Yeah. Move that it be approved. May, Second. Before, well, before we move forward, um, I'd just like to say that actually before I became a city council member, I don't, I don't know that I fully understood the responsibility of a planning commission. Uh, if you read Arkansas state statutes, their authority is uh, broad and wide. And there's a lot of responsibility. And we have a lot going on in Bella Vista right now as we've already you know, had some conversation about that earlier in the night. Um, and if the planning commission member is fulfilling their full responsibility of the job, it takes a significant amount of time, trust me. Uh, I know what each one of us, what we have to do, the research, the homework, et cetera. And I would say that there certainly are months when the planning commission has no less responsibility that would take no less time. So uh, I, I think this is a really good move, and uh, I think they would would fully earn fully earn uh, these amounts that we're I think probably going to approve tonight. Okay, thank you. I know I have a, a Peter, move. Yes, sir. I, I just like to say I, I agree. I think this is long overdue, really, and uh, uh, the planning commission, ladies and gentlemen, on it do uh, a, a great service to the community. Thank you. Thanks, you, want to, you want me to make a motion again? Nope, nope, okay. it's already done. Okay, <laughs> Councilmember Snow. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke. Yes. Carried 6 0. The last resolution of the evening is approving the, the Bella Vista Advertising and Promotion Commission's appointment of Melissa Wells as a tourism industry position uh, commissioner to fill an unexpired term ending the 31st of July 2024 resulting from the resignation of Ashley Dozier uh, no I just like to say so uh, I'm actually the chair of uh, discover Bella Vista otherwise the uh, advertising promotion commission uh, we've had an open seat for a little while uh, I think the mayor will attest to this and some others we have you know different commissions or committees and what have you um, and sometimes it's a struggle to fill some of these these seats, you know, that are required to, to set on these commissions. Uh, so this one's been open for a little while. Uh, Melissa uh, was brought to my attention by uh, the gentleman at his company that manages the AMP. Uh, Melissa is actually and her husband are the owners of a uh, short-term rental here in Bella Vista. Uh, they reside over by Blowing Springs. Uh, Melissa is also a physical therapist that specializes in pool therapy. And I can attest that her schedule is uh, really full, but uh, we're really we're really glad and happy to be able to bring her forward. And I hope she gets approval from the council this evening. Thank you. Any further discussion? Wayne, we haven't got a motion. Yet. Okay, I'll make I I'll make a motion okay. to approve. Second, Mr. Fowler, Mr. Flynn. Okay. All right, Councilmember Burke. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Snow. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. Meetings and announcements. The next City Council work session will be Monday, June 20th at 5 30 here in the courtroom. The next regular meeting of City Council will be Monday, June 27th at 6 30 again here in the court. And the Planning Commission work session will be June the 2nd at 4 30 in the courtroom. The Planning Commission regular meeting will be June the 13th at 4 30 also in the courts and the board of construction appeals will be june the 14th 2022 if required on behalf of council i wish all of you a very happy safe and memorial day weekend yes larry <laughs> just, i just want to thank the uh, uh, planning staff for bringing forward the issues that they have been struggling with for a while and 
allowing us to update the code and making it more effective and useful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Safe journey home, and we are adjourned.